Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back for another edition of Health Class. Like what I told you the last video when we were discussing about the three P's of diabetes or the three common signs of diabetes, I'm going to be discussing today the four common diabetes complications. If you want to know more, keep on watching. Hi guys, my name is Ryan and I'm specializing in diabetes, alcohol and other drugs, men's sexual health and primary care. Today in this video, we'll be discussing about the common diabetes complications that people with diabetes need to know. What are these four common diabetes complications? Well, we have diabetic retinopathy. We also have diabetic nephropathy. We also have diabetic neuropathy and diabetic cardiomyopathy. Today I'm going to be discussing the first three diabetes complications that I've mentioned because the, the last one which is diabetic cardiomyopathy is a little bit complex and complicated so I'm just going to touch base about it briefly later in this video. First, diabetic retinopathy. What is diabetic retinopathy? When your sugar level is uncontrolled or your sugar level is always high, your diabetes is uncontrolled, your vision might be affected. We call it diabetic retinopathy because it is a complication of diabetes. We call it retinopathy because it is a condition or abnormalities of the retina, which is a part of your eye, which is responsible of sending signals to the brain in order for you, in order for us to see. Now what happens if your sugar level is high? Then it can lead to leakage of blood and fluid into the tissues of the retina. Our retina is located at the back of our eyes. Sometimes, if not most of the times, there are no symptoms. And if that person experiences symptoms, then Sometimes it's already in the late stage. Again, diabetic retinopathy is an abnormality or there is an issue of the retina. Retina is the part of the eye which is located at the back of our eye that sends signal to our brain in order for us to see. Now what happened in diabetic retinopathy is that there is a leakage of either blood or fluid into the tissues of the retina leading to vision loss. What are the common uh, signs and symptoms? What are the common symptoms? There's a lot of symptoms, but the common ones that we get are floaters. You might see white spots in your eyes, blurry of vision, and if left untreated, then it can lead to the worst state of vision loss. Now there are four stages of diabetic retinopathy. We have mild non-proliferative retinopathy, moderate non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, and the last stage which is the proliferative retinopathy. And I'm going to be discussing each one of these stages with you. Now the first stage is the mild non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. This is the early stage of diabetic retinopathy. You would expect a, a slight bleeding, it's like a balloon-like swelling in the retina called microaneurysms. It rarely affects vision and rarely needs treatment because it is in the early stage of diabetic retinopathy. But it also means that diabetes is already causing some retinal issue. The second stage is moderate diabetic retinopathy. So it is a stage higher than mild. So in this stage, there is some damage of the retina. So you would expect leakage of blood and fluid into the retina and can affect the vision. So when blood and fluid leaks out into the tissues of the retina, it can affect the vision. Therefore, 
it is really important for you to speak to your doctor about it so that if a referral to, eye, to an eye specialist is needed, then it should be done. The third stage is severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So in this stage, you would expect more leakage of blood and fluid into the retinal tissue and it can lead to vision loss. There might be some vein, retinal vein blockage too that can be a cause of vision loss too. So in this stage, a timely referral to eye specialist is needed as well as urgent and timely treatment to prevent it from getting into the worst state. Now, the last stage of diabetic retinopathy is the proliferative diabetic retinopathy. In this stage, this is the most advanced stage of the stages of the diabetic retinopathy. This stage significantly threatening vision. You would expect poor circulation inside the eye. The retina then grow new veins, but abnormally, and it can cause further retinal damage, leading to vision loss. Now, the current recommendation is at least one eye checked per year okay it depends upon what the what the eye uh, health professional will tell you after, at the end of the consultation they might say i need you to come back in three months time i need you to come back in six months time i need you to come back in in one year i need you to come back in two years time so it depends but the current recommendation is to have your eyes tested on a regular basis to start with you can have your eyes tested annually. It doesn't hurt you. It's bulk bill in Australia anyway. Now you might be asking, what are the treatments for diabetic retinopathy? Well, first and foremost, you need to make sure that your sugar level or your diabetes is well controlled. You need to do some lifestyle modification. That means you need to carefully watch the food that you eat. You need to do some weight management if your weight is not, is not normal to you. But treatment consists of medications and surgery, such as vitrectomy, okay? There's also laser coagulation or, or laser surgery. When it comes to tablet, there's antivascular GF and steroid can be used as well. Now, the second common diabetes complication is what we call diabetic nephropathy. It's when a person is experiencing kidney damage caused by uncontrolled diabetes. Now, we all know that one of the important functions of our kidneys is to filter waste materials. So we have waste materials in our body. And one of the important roles of our kidneys is to filter those waste materials and make sure that they won't go back to our blood circulation and not being used by our body. Over time, poorly controlled diabetes can cause damage to kidney veins that filter waste product from your blood. This can lead into in, to an increased blood pressure or hypertension. Hypertension is also a causative factor for kidney damage. Like diabetic retinopathy, there are four stages of diabetic nephropathy. Stage one is the early stage. The EGFR or estimated glomerular filtration rate is still normal, it's still above 90, but there's already mild kidney damage happened. Now in stage two, there are some loss of kidney function and the EGFR is about 60 to 89%. Just to quickly mention to you, EGFR is one of those blood tests that will tell us whether your kidney is functioning well or not. If your kidney's EGFR is above 90%, then that is perfect. Now in stage three, there's mild to severe loss of kidney function, and the EGFR is expected to be between 30 to 59 percent. Stage four, there is a severe loss of kidney function and the EGFR is expected between 15 and 29 percent. Now, diabetic nephropathy is a serious condition. It is not reversible. Okay, There are treatments that can slow the progression of the condition, but it is not reversible. Now, what are the tests to know whether you have nephropathy or diabetic nephropathy? Simple. You go to your GP, request for a blood test, or you can collect a first urine sample of the day or spot urine, and your doctor will measure the albumin level or rate of your urine sample. It can also be done through blood test. But the quickest one, if you book an appointment and you go to your GP and you collect a small sample of your urine and your GP or your doctor can, can measure your albumin, what are the signs and symptoms of diabetic nephropathy? The common one is swelling. Swelling all over, swelling in your face, 
hands, legs, feet, because your kidney is not able to filter those waste materials. Your kidney is not able to regulate the fluid in your body. As a result, they will go to your face, to your hands, to your legs. There might be nausea and dizziness as well. Unable to sleep, poor concentration, itching, weakness, just to name a few of those signs and symptoms. Like what I said earlier, diabetic nephropathy is irreversible. All we can do is to prevent it from progressing into a worse state. Symptom management. One of the managements around is kidney dialysis. Most of the time, three times a week. Control your diabetes. Make sure that you do some lifestyle modification. Again, watch the food that you ate, exercise and weight management. And obviously, there has to be a good communication between you and your doctor to de determine what is the best treatment for you in order for you to control your diabetes effectively at home. The next common complication is diabetic neuropathy. Neuropathy means nerve damage caused by uncontrolled diabetes. Mostly affects legs and the feet, then eventually arms and hands. From the word itself, neuropathy, it affects our nerves and our nerves are responsible for our sense of touch. If your nerve endings are damaged, then you're not able to, to have that sensation. A peripheral neuropathy is very common in diabetic neuropathy. You are unable to feel pain or temperature changes because your nerve endings are damaged. You might experience numbness, tingling sensation, or cramps. And you might not be able to stand up properly because you're not able to feel the floor. And when you walk, there's a high chance that you might just fall over, hit your head, then more complications will happen. Now, what are the tests to use to diagnose diabetic neuropathy? The common one is nerve conduction velocity. It measures the time or how long the nerves send signal to the brain. Damaged nerves don't transmit quickly as they should. Treatments. Now, like diabetic nephropathy, diabetic neuropathy is also irreversible. There's no treatment, but there are some management plan to control its progression and to manage symptoms. What are the treatments? Well, diabetes medication to help control your sugar, because if your sugar is controlled, then chances are diabetic neuropathy will not progress. Pain medication can be used as well. And also there should be a discussion between you and your doctor because you might need a podiatrist. The current recommendation is at least you have feet checked with a podiatrist once every one to two years. Now, the last common diabetes complication that I'm going to discuss with you is diabetic cardiomyopathy. I'm just gonna discuss this briefly because this complication is, is very complicated and, and complex. In diabetes cardiomyopathy, there is a diabetes associated structural changes of your heart. When I say cardio, myo, that means heart. That's the medical term for heart. So there is diabetes associated changes in the structure and function of the heart. Increased sugar, increased insulin in the blood can lead to myocardial fibrosis as well as hypertrophy and mitochondrial dysfunction. Let's recap. When I say pathy, if the medical word ends with pathy, that means a condition. That means abnormality. It also means that there is an issue. So when I say diabetic retinopathy, that means there is an issue with the retina. Retino is retina. Pathy is abnormality. There is abnormality or issue with the retina. And then when I say diabetic, that means it's associated with diabetes. When I say diabetic nephropathy, that means pathy is abnormality or issue or a condition. Nephro is a medical term for kidneys. So nephropathy, that means abnormality in the kidneys. And then diabetic, it is a diabetes associated, there is a diabetes associated abnormality, abnormality or abnormalities in the kidneys. When I say neuropathy, neuro is a medical term for nerves. Pathy, abnormality, a condition or issues. So neuropathy, there is an abnormality or condition or issues with the nerves. Diabetic neuropathy, if it's diabetic neuropathy, that means it's there is a diabetes associated nerve abnormalities. When I say diabetic cardiomyopathy, 
that means pathé as abnormality or condition or issues, cardiomyo, heart, that means abnormality or issues with the heart. Then if it's diabetic cardiomyopathy, there is diabetes associated abnormalities in the heart. So that's it guys. I've just discussed with you the basic four common diabetes complications. There's more to each of these four diabetes complications, but I've just discussed it with you briefly. So I've tried my best to use simple words in order for you guys to follow me effectively. The take home message here is to live a healthy lifestyle. If you have diabetes, make sure that you do some lifestyle modification if you don't want these diabetes complications from happening. That is watching the food that you ate, make sure that your weight is within the limits, you exercise regularly, the current recommendation is at least 30 minutes of exercise a day. If you have exercised today for two hours, then that's just for today. Tomorrow is a different day. The next day is a different day. You still need to exercise. Do the recommended regular checkups. That means having your eyes tested regularly, having your feet checked regularly, seeing your doctor on a regular basis, having your blood test on a regular basis, if you are taking diabetes medication at home, then you need to be checking your sugar levels at home as well so that you can monitor how your diabetes is going. And if you see that your sugar level is going up, then you need to book an appointment with your doctor so that you can discuss the most appropriate and effective manage management plan to control your diabetes. Thank you for watching my video. I'm gonna be discussing more health related topics. I'm gonna be focusing on men's health in my next videos. Stay safe, be healthy.